today on Direction for Life. Some of you may be flatlined for a minute, but some of y'all have come back into this place of what God has called you. You say, you know what, God? It doesn't matter, but I'm going to give you the praise. It doesn't matter. I'm going to give you the worship. It doesn't matter. I'm going to call on your name. He said, that thing that came in to try to turn you against God, turn you against the church, turn you against the walk of faith has turned you into a place that God says that I have positioned at this time for you to walk in. Today's message is Things Have Turned by Dr. Marsha Bailey. I want to begin to share with you and let you know that God says he knows what you have been dealing with and what you have been going through. He said, but I don't want you to give up. In this time, in this season, those who say, I'm getting ready to just throw in the towel and I'm, I'm not going to try to do all of that. He said, don't give up. Because it hurts too much. Don't give up because you've been disappointed. Don't give up because you've been dropped. Because as I just said, because we are getting ready to see the church's greatest hour. And God said, I want to let you know that even though you've gone through certain things and gone through situations, those situations have come in one way to try to break you down. But God said, I've gotten in your situation. You don't realize I've gotten in your situation because some of you can testify and some of you can agree with me because there was a time when you would go through certain things and those certain things would cause you kind of get go flatline. And some of you may be flatlined for a minute, but some of y'all have come back into this place of what God has called you. Say, you know what, God, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to give you the praise. It doesn't matter, I'm going to give you the worship. It doesn't matter, I'm going to call on your name. He said, that thing that came in to try to turn you against God, turn you against the church, turn you against the walk of faith has turned you into a place that God says that I have positioned at this time for you to walk in. And I'm going to bring you to a passage of scripture and I'm going to read it from the message translation. And if I'm just going to read the ninth verse, but I want to challenge you and, and charge you to read uh, the uh, majority part of that passage of scripture. He says, in the end, and I want to let you know you're at the end of your drama. You're at the end of your craziness. You're at the end of whatever you've been dealing with. He said, you are at the end. He said, in the end, I will turn things around for the people. I just want to put a period right there. He said, I'm getting ready to turn some things around for you. But I can't turn them around if you give up. I can't turn them around if you quit. I can't turn them around if you give in and throw in the towel. But if you hold strong, if you hold your ground, if, if you just muster up whatever you have left. He says, I'm going to turn this puppy around for you. I'm going to turn this baby around. He said, I'm going to turn things around for the people. He said, I'll give them a language undistorted. How many of y'all learned how to pray through this season of madness? Come on now. He said, I'm going to give you a language that's undistorted, unpolluted, words to address God in worship. Hallelujah. Some of you didn't need a band behind you. You didn't need any music CD. You didn't need any praise team. You get into worship in your house and came up and came out of it. And you recognize, wow, how long I've been in this place. Because you chose during your tr craziness. You chose during your drama. You chose during your confusion to find a place of worship, to find a place of prayer, to find a place of service. God says, I'm going to change your worship. Basically, I'm getting all in your worship. I have transitioned you in your worship. He said, and united to serve me with shoulders to the wheel. There's some people who fell out of serving and came back into serving and made their mind of God, I don't care if they recognize me. I don't care if they call my name because you've been too good to me. There's some people come in the house of God don't need a plaque. There's some people in the house of God don't need a name tag. There's some people in the house of God don't need anybody to recognize their name on um, volunteer recognition Sunday. All they know, God, you called my name. You recognize my name when you brought me out of the craziness I was living in. When you brought me out of the sin I was walking in, you allowed me to come out of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. I am grateful. God said there's a people who are rising up during this crazy time who are grateful, who love God, who's going to serve God, who are hungry for God, who don't need all the bells and all the whistles, who don't need a special platform, who don't need a web page, who don't need somebody to come and sign this and do this for them. All they know, God, that you told me to do this. All they know, 
Lord God, that you call my name. There's a people that God said, they're putting their shoulder to the wheel. They say, I may not have the education that you think I should have. I may not have the degree that you should think I should or the experience, but I put my shoulder to the wheel. He said, there's some prostitutes that said, I know I might not be all clean. You may know about my lifestyle, but I'm putting my shoulder to the wheel. There's some people been living and walking in clubs and doing all kinds of things. I know you know about me because you see me on the fly, but I put my shoulder to the wheel. But you have cleaned me up in my worship. My language has gotten clean and understood, and God recognized what I'm saying when I get in this place of worship. And God said, I'm turning some things for the people of God. And what I want to encourage you and let you know, and Pastor tapped into this a couple of Sundays ago, and Lord been dealing with me about this for a while, that things are about to turn. Things are getting ready to turn. You could put it any kind of way in your notebook. Things are about to turn or things are getting ready to turn. Or how about this? Things has turned. I tell you now, God said God's doing some things in this situation. You thought things were shut down. You thought things were over. But God said, I'm turning some things. He said, in the end, I'm turning things around for my people. I'm turning your marriage around. I'm turning your finance around. I'm turning your situations around. God said, I have gotten into your crisis, and I'm going to turn it around. Luke 21, 11, verse the 15 through the 15. He said, and a great earthquake, and shall be divers of places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs, and shall be from heaven. All kinds of crazy stuff. All kinds of confusion. But before all these, they shall lay hands on you and persecute it persecute you. Anybody gone through any persecution? Anybody hands been laid on you? You're touching my character. You're touching my name. You're just touching me. Get your hands off me. You don't know me. You don't know how I used to roll. Don't put your hands on me. That's some of your what you said. Don't put your hands on me. Don't bring me out. Don't bring out the old me. I'm saved. Come on now. Leave me alone. He said they've been trying to put their hands on you, but you tried to maintain. What am I saying? There was a season when you cut somebody out. There was a season that you went and got your gun. There was a season that you went and got the thing tax, um, strapped to your leg. There was a season that you did something to somebody's car, did something to somebody's name, but you made your mind up, God, you know what? I'm not going to go that way this time. I'm going to do right this time. I'm going to live right this time. I'm not going to allow them to lower me. I'm not going to allow them to bring me down. I'm going to maintain your righteous standard. They're not going to call me out and make me act like somebody that I let go long ago. Somebody made a decision. I'm I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to do right and be right, even though nobody else will be right. And it's been hard for you. And you've been crying sometimes. And you don't understand why people are treating you a particular way or things are at this place. But you made your mind up that I'm going to do this thing for Jesus. Even though nobody don't recognize my change, recognize how I'm doing things differently, recognize that I'm living differently, even though they don't recognize anything, I'm doing this before you. I'm here to announce the end of the madness has come. God said, you at the end of your trauma, you at the end of your trauma, you at the end of your craziness, and I done stepped in on this thing, and I'm turning it around. So we're in the season of the turnaround, baby, because God said, I'm the God of the turnaround. And because you've been living for me, when everybody else tried to cause you not to live for me, I'm turning your situation around. He said, now they're going to try to persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues, into the prison, being brought up before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You say, my God, I can't believe they told that story to my man of God. I can't believe they told that story to the elder. I can't believe they told that story to my pastor. I can't believe they lied on me. I can't believe they distorted and exaggerated and turned it into something that for their benefit. I can't believe they scandalized my name. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I came for, but somebody lied on you. Somebody I don't stretch the story, huh? You know, somebody had put a spin on that thing. But God says, I'm turning the situation around. If you just keep holding your course, I'm going to turn the situation around. 13 verse, he said, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. He said, this thing is turning, 
and you're going to have a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to gainsay or resist. And God said, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm giving my people a testimony. I need you to stop worrying. I need you to stop trying to figure things out and trust me. I'm going to give you strategy that your enemies won't be able to try to come up against or maneuver against. Somebody said, every time I come up with a plan, every time I come up with a strategy, it works for a little while, then the door is shut. God said, that thing is over, baby. He said, I'm getting in your situation and the strategy I'm I'm giving you the enemy will not be able to maneuver against the enemy will not be able to go behind closed door and come up with another plan this thing is just about to be over God said because I am showing myself strong and I'm making a shift in this season because my church is in its greatest hour and even though you recognize that these things were wrong you chose not to be wrong So I'm saying that there is a turnaround for the church of God and for the people of God. He said, I'm going to turn around. When you begin to look at the word turn, begin to understand it. Turn means to change in character and nature. Turn means to change in position. Turn means to alter the course. And God said, that's what I'm doing for the people of God in this season. That's what I'm doing for the household of faith. I'm changing the character and their nature. I'm changing their positions. I'm altering the course of some things and I want to begin to let you know what's getting ready to turn I've been alluding to this number one the household of faith is getting ready to turn we're getting ready to turn y'all we're just not going to be a a people that just come together and just have church we're coming to people come together get worship and get answered get strategies come on now people that come together get transformed what am I telling you every time you walk through those doors you're going from one level of glory to a whole nother level of glory when you come through the doors that's why Satan messes with the church because he don't want you to come to church because he knows when you come to church you step into an anointed atmosphere an anointed atmosphere that's been orchestrated by anointed people and praise and worship because what we need is worship and the word in this season and so as they begin to open up their voices and bring unto them broken vessels before the Lord understand that God I'm nothing without you that's what a broken vessel I don't care how good you can sing. I don't care how skilled, but I'm broken, God. Unless you give me a note, unless you sit on my vocal cords, I can't do a thing. Unless you get in my fingers, I can't move along the keyboard. Come on now, because what we need in this season is some anointed minstrels, people who spend some time in the prayer room, some people that spend some time at the threshing floor. Come on, the threshing, thre- the threshing floor is with a place where the shaft is separated from the wheat. And you know how it's separated? It's rocks begin to beat on the wheat. Rocks begin to crush the wheat and get rid of all the impurities impurities, all the, the fluff that's unnecessary to eat. And some of you have been resisting, testing, resisting going through anything because it's too hard. But those are the household of faith that say, I know this hard, but I'm going to stay in this place, God, because you told me not to move from this place. The rock was beating you. The rock was beating you. The rock was beating you. And what I'm saying to you right now, all that stuff that you've been dealing with, all that stuff you said, God, I thought that was out of my heart. All that stuff that you thought, God, I don't believe I'm thinking this way. I still got this kind of thing in my spirit. God said, what I'm doing right now in this season, I'm beating it out of you. I'm allowing this thing, circumstance, to really crush you. And through the crushing, I'm in it. Through the pressing, I'm in it. And then I'm going to allow the wind of the Holy Ghost to begin to blow. And it's going to blow away the shaft out of your life. And we can step forth more like him. That's the season, y'all. Every time God allows us to go through something, we should not go through it and come out the same way. God gets in every crisis. He gets in every circumstances. And when he gets in it, he changes you. He changes you. But I sense an acceleration in the kingdom of God, an acceleration by the spirit of the Lord, that every time we walk into this place, we are not just being changed one time. We're being changed sequentially, quickly, several times. And God says, I'm, I've gotten in this change because Jesus is soon to come, and I need my church to be more like me. So we're getting ready to represent as the sons of God. Romans 8, the 18th verse of the chapter, 8th chapter, the 18th verse says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You've been going through some stuff. God said, I know you've been going through some stuff, but it's not going to be compared to the glory that's getting ready to come in you and be revealed through you. 
he said, you've been going through, but it's been working. The threshing floor, y'all, the threshing floor, because your crisis drew you and chased you into the presence of God. The crisis brought you to your knees. The crisis brought you into worship. And every time when you're in a hard place, in a rock place, and between the wall, behind you, back up against the wall, and you get in a place of worship, I believe God began to do some things supernaturally in your life, and you begin to change, and you begin to be tra- become transformed. He said, the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature, which is the earth, waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. The New Li- Living Translator, how did this soul that just required of the law will be fully satisfied? Uh, no, 18 verse, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory which shall be revealed to us later for the creature creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are yeah the pressure has been designed to break you but God said, I'm getting into this pressure. Zechariah 13, chapter 8, I just want to make reference to this because God began to gave, gave me this word several years ago. He said, I sit as a refiner over the fire. And he basically talks like he sits over the refiner and the people of God, he called the Levites into the fire. He called the Levites. He said, some of you can't believe you're going through some stuff like this. He said, God, I serve you. God, I, I live for you. God, I've been doing this for you. He said, I've been calling the Levites into the fire. And he sits as a refiner over the fire. He begins to sit. And he be- basically, when a refiner sits over the fire, he's dealing with a precious metal. And what the Lord began to show me, that some of us, you know, God, allow the church, allow the kingdom of God. We have accumulated. We got to a place, and we've been building some stuff. And you thought we was good. And all of a sudden, there's been a shift, right? Right? And all of a sudden, you've gone in the fire. What he's done, he's taken what you have done, taken what you acquired in your heart, and he's bringing it into the fire to purify it. Yeah, but it's all right. It's all right. When you can get you in the fire, he begins to get rid of all the impurities, anything that does not look like him. And he sits over it, and basically, he's looking at it. And some of you say, God, why aren't you moving? He's looking at you. He's watching you. And what the refiner waits for is to see his face. He waits to see his image in the metal. That's why you got to stay where you are. You can't try to come up with the answer yourself. You can't try to figure this out because God's working something in me. He's working something out of me. I don't know who is here today that's been gone through some intensity. You feel like you're in a crucible of affliction within your soul. And you don't understand why nobody's coming to help you. Nobody's calling for you. There's no phone calls. There's no visitation. Where is the household of faith? God says, I got you. And some of you don't understand. He's just been blocking people. Because if people give you what you need, you won't become what he wants. And he's like, I got you. I, I love you. I'm just waiting for you to change. I'm waiting you to become more like me. I'm waiting for you to make a decision. For God, I live. And for God, I'm dying. Even though you may not have to put your life down, I'm waiting you to choose me. He said, this thing will get hot until you make a decision. God, I thank you for the house, but if you take the house, I'm still going to serve you. I'm waiting you to get to a place that even though you bless my hands and I have the power to get wealth, if you call me from it, I do it. He's just waiting for the people of God to look like him. So I sit as a refiner over the fire, looking at the precious metal I've created. And I'm looking to see my image. In one translation, he said, he gets rid of the dross. That's all the impure. He, he scoops it up. I don't know if anybody felt like they've been being purged. There have been times I felt like I've been gutted like a fish. I said, oh, God, what's going on? He said, I'm getting rid of some stuff. 
You've been calling on me to handle some things. I, I'm getting rid of that stuff that keeps you hiccuping in, on the path and, and, and hiccuping on the race I called you to run. You keep going and stopping. I'm getting rid of the stuff. And this thing is hot, but I designed it to be hot because I need to break you down until you become more like me. And if you just open up your mouth and call on my name, I can begin to work the work that I've been called to work on you in this season. And you know what? The household faith, we don't want none of this stuff. What are you talking about? I'm a name and a claim and get up out of it. You're still in it. God's doing something. God doing something in this season. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm perfecting my church. I've gotten in the fire. So Satan had no idea that the trouble that came into your life that he orchestrated, that God was going to get in it and come and turn that thing around. He had no idea that you went in that thing one way. And you coming out with power. You see an example of this with Jesus who ushered into the wilderness. That always bothered me. Led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tested. And tried for 40 days without food. That is the longest time. That's a, that's a, uh, a divine fast. God has to call you on a 40-day fast with no food or no water. Y'all hear me, people of God, I'm going on a 40-day fast. God has to call you on that. And 40 always represents a number of testing and trying in the scriptures. And represent a testing and trying. So God's working something. God's allowing you to get options and choices. Satan has access to your soul. Has access to talk to you. If you do this, I'll do this. Do this, do it like this. So you have access, but then you got you to go to the word. You got to handle with the word. So some of us, we're in this season and it's been long. I've been in this a long time. I'm submitting to you. It's an orchestrated movement of God to bring you in one way to take you out another way. So why I'm not being delivered? Why things are the same way? God said, I'm getting in this thing. So Jesus, in that wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights, tempted of the devil, led by the spirit. But the end of that passage talks about how he goes out with power. And so what we're giving to do, we're giving a lead and go out with power. Second Corinthians, the third chapter, 18th verse. But we are with open faces beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the spirit of the Lord. So as we begin to get into the presence of God, because your crisis is, is, is calling us into the presence of God. He's like, and it's unfortunately, we need trauma and trouble to bring us to our knees. It's unfortunate that we need the legalization of gay marriage to call us to pray. The church has become prayerless. The church has become worshipless. But now we're getting into a place that, you know, and guys, I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to use what's going on in the land to raise up my church. Because as we get in this place, I'm gonna, I submit to you, we're going to go from one glory to another glory. And then when we walk out those doors, we're going to demonstrate See, what they need to see, let me see your words. Put, um, um, Paul and Peter and Paul said, uh, uh, silver I have, uh, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but look on me, as such as I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's what they need, the name of Jesus. The world around you may be chaotic and your situation seems unbearable. But Dr. Marsha Bailey encourages you. Things have turned in your favor. Don't allow your situation to cause you to quit because your breakthrough is right around the corner. Order this powerful CD-DVD combination today for your love gift of $15 or more. Ask for Things Have Turned. Every motion picture has more than one scene. Some may be filled with drama, action, or even comedy. But one thing is consistent. The scene changes. You may be in a dry place now, but that scene going to change because God going to water you in the next scene. Your life is a constant movie. And though you may be facing a challenge now, rest assured, the camera is still rolling. There's nothing that you're going through that's not God's not going to use it for your testimony. There's nothing you've been through that God's not going to get glory out of. Dr. Herbert Bailey encourages you to keep going. 
you may be playing your best role yet. Everything you have gone through, God's going to get glory. God's going to get praise. The devil's going to get mad. Somebody say, there are no insignificant scenes in my life. Order these resources today for your love gift of $15 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. So in the midst of a bad situation, you got to keep your expectation high. In the midst of a bad scene, you still got to expect God to turn that thing around. He showed you in your prayer closet that something that he spoke to you at night. There's something you see when you get up in the morning and do your hair, brush your teeth. There's another you on the inside of you. And there's something you see. Nobody else sees it, but you see it, that this ain't it. This is not what you call me to dwell in. God never intended for you to be saved and broke. He never intended for you to be saved and sick. He never intended for you to be saved and still having marriage problems. The enemy has held back that for long enough. When you don't transition, you get stuck. And the church, instead of being a movement, becomes a monument and then becomes a museum. And all you do is look back and say what used to be. But God is moving. You don't know how big God is until you get in a little bit of trouble because you cannot perceive the greatness of God just by counting your blessings. You perceive the greatness of God by counting the burdens that he's enabled you to carry because his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Woo. Slap somebody tell them I ain't scared of trouble. Next week on Direction for Life. Success is the greatest revenge. Look at somebody say, I ain't running from nothing to nobody. For your shame, you should have the double. Sometimes it ain't time to run. It's time to hang in there. It's time to keep on digging. Keep on pressing. Push past what you think people are thinking about you. That's of the devil anyway. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praise report at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one-time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll-free at 877-798-5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.